So you have a movie called In a Strange Land and it's based on a true story and, and it tells the story of a young lady trafficked from Nigeria. Yeah. Um, what has the reception been to that movie? Oh, it's been enormous. We've been, uh, we've been to, I think the first premiere we did, we had the Kevin Hayland, the anti-slavery commissioner, he came to the movie premiere in London here. We've taken the movie to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we're working with a charity organization called NAPTIC mm -hmm. in Nigeria. The movie is in cinema across, all on, uh, across Nigeria. Mm -hmm. People have been to cinema to see it, and I've received a normal feedback from people that have watched the movie in Nigeria that, oh my God, does things like this exist in the UK? And my answer is yes, it does exist. That is why if anybody comes to Nigeria to drink and bust you, to leave your daughter or leave your son, please check that person's background. Before. Don't look at the Nigerian current economy situation and just sell the soul of your child mm -hmm. to a land that you don't know. That is why we titled it In a Strange Land. Mm -hmm. Don't forget these people that have been trafficked, they're from the poorer side of Nigeria. They're from the village. So there is something called the push and the pull that is pulling them over to the UK. Mm -hmm. And then we've taken the movie to Germany. Um, I think Germany government, well, some of them, they came to, they saw the movie on Saturday and they're quite intrigued, like, wow, we need to take this movie. We want to translate it to Dutch language and put it in our cinema. So it's, it, the movie has been widely, gladly accepted by, by people, which I think my mission of producing the movie is being accomplished. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's being used uh, for the Home Office campaign mm -hmm. against anti-slavery. Mm -hmm. yeah. What inspired you to, to make the film? I know you said it, it's based on a true story. Yeah. I'm a theatre nurse. Mm -hmm. I love, I'm a humanitarian. Anything to put a smile on people's face is my joy. So I love, I don't produce movies that just make people mm -hmm. smile, make people laugh. I want to produce films that raise awareness, educate people, and at the same time, learn one or two lessons mm -hmm. from it. So that is my passion to, to, to produce the film. Do you plan to take it on to any more countries in Africa? Um, yeah, there are a number of people that have come on board, uh, Kenya and um, Uganda, mm -hmm. but it's all down to funding. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment I'm using my money to fund everything. So I've told them if we see sponsors that want to come on board to take it to other African countries, we're ready to, to take it there. Yeah. So we've talked about um, what signs to look out for um, if someone suspects someone that's living in domestic slavery. What other things should we look out for? I mean, if, if, from a victim's perspective, if you're at home and you're, you've been brought over, you're supporting your family back home, and that might make it a bit harder for you to think, okay, I, I, d I want to leave this situation because you know that you're the only one that's yeah. supporting. You've said that a lot of people come from villages mm -hmm. and rural areas. So what more, what push could you give to, give to that individual to say, you know what, this isn't right and this, there's probably a better way? It's really about the fact that that person is a person of value, mm -hmm. should be respected, and should be able to have a life. Um, if they've come to this country to send money back to the, the family in the village, um, that is a commendable thing, but it should not be at the expense of yeah. their lives. Yeah. They matter. That's right. Girls matter, and it's often, sadly, girls, young women, who are used in this way, and they matter. Their lives are valuable. They need to think of themselves of, as a person of worth. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's time to not accept the cruelty that you are enduring. It's time to do something about it and get yourself out of that situation. Mm -hmm. There is a different way to try to help your family back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sorry to add to that, in, in, in the process of you trying to save your family back home, you could die from it. And the family back home will continue to live their life. Mm -hmm. So if you know you can't endure what you've been, you're doing as a domestic slave person, don't do it. Yeah. 
How confidential is the line if someone wants to call? How confidential is it that they know this isn't going to be traced back and no one will know that I was the person that called up? The modern slavery helpline is confidential. And so nobody would be able to trace back to that individual. Um, within the, the Salvation Army's referral line, if the person identifies as the referrer, then obviously, if they're happy to be named, they would be named. But if not, it would be confidential also, because we're concerned about the victim, and we want to help the victim and get the best for that victim. What happens to the perpetrator after someone's referred and it's found <laughs> out that they are actually forcing someone into slavery? There isn't a set answer to that. It varies because obviously sometimes it's a case of um, bringing someone to, to justice and they may be fined for what they have done. Um, it's so different scenarios would create a different level of response. Certainly not everyone would be end up in prison, but there have been. There have been some who have ended up in prison because they, they are not willing to learn and not willing to change their ways and they have been found to, to have been involved with maybe more than one young person. I'd like to ask about spousal domestic servitude. How hard is that to identify? Because if you're married to someone, um, you might think that this is just, it might be a normal thing for you to do. How can you differentiate between slavery and domestic violence? It's very difficult. <laughs> it's very it's difficult. Very difficult yeah. um, I think that um, that makes it very difficult for the police to differentiate between someone who's in a domestic violence situation and someone who's in a domestic servitude situation. Um, often there can be a forced marriage or a deceptive marriage. So um, someone, they may be forced into marriage or they may be deceived that this person genuinely loves them and wants to give them a better life. And when they um, are in this country, they find that they totally lose their freedom. Their, their papers, their passports taken away from them. They're given no freedom. They're expected to be on call 24-7. They're serving maybe an extended family. So it's not even just the husband. Um, so in that situation, there is abuse. There may be physical abuse. Um, but this, it's... Also the fact that they have no freedom, no income, no independence and are not able to make friends. Often if it is domestic violence, that individual is still coming and going into the house. There is a controlling by the spouse, but they will be maybe even going to work um, and having friends even but the secret side of the husband's abuse is kept away. So it's, it's a difficult thing to differentiate, but it's basically about, does that person ever go out on their own? Are they ever allowed out on their own? Are they allowed to have friends? Are they allowed to invite people into the house? What, to what extent is their life controlled? Mm -hmm. I think, do yeah, you agree? That, yeah, I do, I, I agree with that. Like the, the scenario I've given about the, the lady that was brought to our hospital to have the women surgery done. So that's a typical one. She, I don't think she was really in a violent relationship. I think it's a, it's a, it's a relationship of slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been told what to do. She doesn't have her own money. She doesn't go out. She doesn't have friends. All she ever does is children give birth. You can imagine at the age of 21 years old, you've got four kids. And then this man just say, sit there, she sits, stand up, she stands. Don't talk, she doesn't talk. So you can, she just like a remote control. She control, he controls her. So in that one, I think I'll, I'll see as a modern, modern day slavery relationship rather than an, a, a violent relationship. Yeah. And, and often, as you said, um, they're not given the opportunity to learn to speak the language, so they can't speak English. Therefore, they don't know how to seek help because 
they, they maybe don't even know where they are in the country. Mm -hmm. They've been taken to a house and they're in that house. They don't know how they could escape or who they could go to or how they could communicate if they did escape. Mm -hmm. So what is the Nigerian government, seen as though Nigeria is one of the top places that has domestic slavery, what is the government doing to tackle this? The government is, is working with the UK government. Yeah. So um, the UK government, Kevin Highlands, have been over to Nigeria and um, the Nigerian government is looking at ways of raising awareness also. Um, so there is that level of cooperation with the Nigerian government. Um, NAPTIP has been mentioned. NAPTIP is an agency of the government which is to help victims of trafficking and modern slavery, either within Nigeria or those coming in from, back in from abroad. Um, so the government, the UK government is also working to try to uh, empower NAPTIP in what they are doing. So the, the UK government and the Nigeria government are aware of this, um, but it is a huge mm -hmm. task and very difficult in a large country, a densely populated mm -hmm. country like <laughs> Nigeria, where sadly corruption also mm -hmm. makes it difficult mm -hmm. to address this problem. Edo State in Nigeria yeah. is quite a, a hotbed for trafficking. Is there a reason why? I think with the Edo State one, it's more of um, they've been trafficked for sexual exploitation rather than the domestic, domestic um, slavery. So with the Edo State, I'm not really, I'm not really into the Edo State slavery with them, them with sales ex exploitation. I'm more into the domestic servitude one. Yeah. But someone, even though this is focusing on domestic slavery, if someone has been sexually, sexually exploited, they can still reach out to the Salvation Absolutely, Army Absolutely, yes. get advice. And, and so we would say again to someone who, who finds themselves in a situation of sexual exploitation, you can get help. Mm -hmm. If you call that number, that telephone number, you will get help. Again, you'll get the support that you need to help you to move on. You don't have to stay in that situation. Where else can people go to get more information? There are websites. Yeah. Uh, the Salvation Army has its own website um, on www.salvationarmy.org.uk slash human dash trafficking. There's also Africa. You Africa, have your yeah. Africa, they have their own website as well that you can log on to, I think, www.africa.org. You can get help from there. And funnily, yesterday, um, no, this morning when I was coming from Germany, I just popped into the loo. And as, um, as I saw about to do my business, I looked up, big poster on the, on the door about domestic, domestic servitude from Salvation Army. I was like, my God, this is a huge campaign. So I really want to say, give it up to Home Office, give it up to Salvation Army, give it up to Afroka and other charities that are involved in this. That yes, is they've noticed it and they're doing something about it. So I say thank you to everybody that involved. Rosalind Sania Jose and Lieutenant Colonel Diane Payne, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for thank this you. opportunity. Thank, thank you, you very much.